everybody, welcome to Review a Day, episode number 58 for Thursday, October the 9th, 2008. Hello everybody, welcome to Review a Day, the daily video blog where I review a movie seven days a week. My name is Leland Bringer and thank you very much for joining me. And the film I'm going to review today is Donnie Darko. Everyone's been asking me to review this, so I'm finally going to do it. Probably going to go a little bit longer and I'm also going to do some spoilers for this movie because I think most people have seen it. Uh, this movie is written and directed by Richard Kelly, who followed up this movie a year or two ago with the movie Southland Tales. I'm also going to do a review of that uh, sometime soon. But this movie stars Jake Gyllenhaal, Gina, Mal Gina Malone, Jenna Malone, um, Holmes Osborne, Mary McDonnell, Patrick Swayze, uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal. Also very small roles from Seth Rogen and a uh, very, very small role from Ashley Tisdale of... High School Musical fame. Uh, this movie is about Donnie Darko, who's a troubled teen. Um, he's in therapy. He has a lot of problems. Um, and one day, he has this vision of a rabbit named Frank, who tells him to get up and leave. And when he leaves, a jet engine falls through his house, and had Frank not told him he would have died. Frank starts telling him to commit all these strange and different crimes. Frank talks about time travel and kind of leads Donnie down this strange path that uncovers uh, strange things about the people around him and the very fabric of life itself. Um, I honestly hadn't reviewed Donnie Darko yet because I hadn't seen this movie in probably four or five years and I'm notorious among a couple of my friends as being someone who says they hate Donnie Darko. Um, hear me out, hear me out. I'm not done yet. Um, but I, I revisited this film. I hadn't seen it for a number of years and I, I had a very different experience this time watching the film than I did the first time I watched it. Um, first off, the cast is incredible. This movie has an amazing cast with amazing performances. Jake Gyllenhaal is pitch perfect in this film. He plays angsty, troubled teen better than anyone I've ever seen, ever, just about. Um, when he goes into that, when he goes into that, like, creepy Donnie Darko mode, when he's talking to Frank and he's like, it's so creepy. He's so good in this movie. I, um, I love him in this movie. Um, Holmes Osborne and Mary McDonald, who play his parents, are fantastic in this movie. They're funny, and you can tell they really care about their son. I like that this movie isn't just, like, his parents are dicks, and, you know, that's why he's, he's troubled. It's not the case in this movie. I think the movie handles the family dynamic incredibly well. I think Mary McDonnell is one of the most underrated actresses working today. The fact that she hasn't even been nominated for her performance uh, as President Roslin on Battlestar Galactica to me is like an outrage because she's phenomenal. She's a phenomenal actress. Patrick Swayze is fantastic in this movie as the motivational speaker. Um, just a, a fantastic. It's such a great cast. Um, the movie is incredibly creepy and it has such a great creepy tone. Um, Grandma Death, the old lady who walks back and forth checking her mailbox over and over again, scares the shit out of me. She is so creepy. And just that image of her with like the crazy hair and her walking like late at night is so inherently scary to me. Um, I, I mean, of course, Frank the giant rabbit is scary as hell. Um, I, I love it. I think um, it wraps full circle toward the end. And I think it's creepy and I really like that about this movie. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I've com I completely learned to appreciate this film the second time I've watched it. I, I really liked it. But the problems I had with the film the first time I watched it are still there for me. Um, I still have no idea where the cellar door comes from. I think it's near Grandma Death's house. But I don't understand why he stumbles upon it and well, what the significance of that is. I don't really know. Um, but more, my more, the bigger problem for me with the cellar door is they go in there and they're kind of dicking around in there. She plays the piano a little bit. But then Seth Rogen and that other thug kid are like hiding in there wearing like masks. Um, I, are they, I don't know if they're robbing it or exactly what they're doing. I don't, there's a lot of things about that happen toward the end of this film that aren't very clear to me. Maybe, I, I'm, I'm hoping people can clear this up for me because I really want to know everything that happens in this movie. Um, the other thing that really confuses me is I don't understand, and this is total spoilers, so if you don't know the ending of Donnie Darko, you don't want it spoiled, turn this off and go see it, because it's worth it. I don't know why Donnie goes back in time and has to die. I mean, does he just choose to kill himself? Because I know that 
he goes back and he's probably saving everyone in this movie who's killed, like his girlfriend and his mother and sister, I think. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't know. If he goes back and kills himself, does that mean the jet engine later on won't explode because his sister's still going to die um, anyways? Um, I, I mean, I understand that... Um, I don't know. I'm a hardcore Doctor Who fan, so anytime time travel gets involved in something, I, I try to nitpick it like as much as I can. The ending of this movie is very confusing. It's I, it's not clear, and I feel like I'm a pretty smart film watcher. I've watched a lot of movies, and I feel like I can follow movies really well. Um, and I, I've watched the audio commentary with Richard Kelly and Kevin Smith, and Kevin Smith asks questions in the audio commentary that I feel. Richard Kelly should be able to answer, and he doesn't. And I think that it comes across in the film. Like, Richard Kelly doesn't exactly understand everything that happens in this movie. However, I'm, I'm going to accept that because I'm also a big David Lynch fan, Twin Peaks, and uh, Mulholland Drive. And th th those films don't make any sense. But I think I enjoy the ride of those movies more than I did Donnie Darko the first time. But I've come to really love the ride that Donnie Darko put me through. I give Donnie Darko a 4 out of 5. The cast is phenomenal. This movie's great. Richard Kelly uses music so well in all of his films, and I really liked it. Even with all the confusion I have about this movie, I, I really liked it. Um, uh, I think it's a great movie to watch this time of year, considering it takes place around Halloween. It's confusing, it's dark, it's creepy. I really liked it. I'm glad everyone suggested that I review this film, because... So thank you guys, I was wrong. Um, if you guys are liking my reviews, make sure and subscribe. If you have any recommendations on any films you'd like to see me review, leave them in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.